Dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, this opportunity to, to study together and discuss these things that you have brought to light. Uh, please guide our minds, give us uh, an understanding, Lord, of the patterns and symbols that you have revealed to us. Please bless me uh, with the clarity of voice and help me to make this understandable to the people. Uh, be with us. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we will just uh, have a review of uh, the whole document of the July 18, uh, 2020 prophecy. We will try to do this in uh, 90 minutes, so we have to go uh, fast. Uh, and we will try to get through this, uh, this study, starting on page uh, 11. <coughs> Uh, we have there the lines of Ezekiel and Josiah Lich. It's on the back of this board. <coughs> this is where it all, st all started with. And they form the base of this, this whole study. So, without going into the depths of this whole study, we will just try to show the, the patterns and why we come up with uh, July 18. The line of Ezekiel, we see this, this vision of, of, of Ezekiel uh, in connection with Jeroboam, the story of Jeroboam and the disobedient prophet, which starts in... 977 BC, where this whole vision of Ezekiel uh, begins. Uh, we saw that this happened at the, of this took place at the moment where Jeroboam was offering at the, at the altar on the 15th day of the eighth month. It is, it is mentioned two times, 1 Kings uh, 12, 32 and 33. We saw here the symbol of the 15th day of the 8th month, which is a symbol for the midnight cry. Uh, in, in the Millerite history, yeah, because uh, Samuel Snow gave the midnight cry on the 15th day of the 8th month, uh, or August 15. But this is not the Gregorian date, this is the biblical date. So we make use of different calendars, the biblical, the rabbinical, the Gregorian and Julian. Uh, but this has been explained in the, in, in, the, in the studies, in the presentations that we did. From here it is... Uh, 391 years to the destruction, to the siege of Jerusalem, which is what this vision of uh, Ezekiel was all about. Uh, his vision was about the coming destruction of Jerusalem that took place uh, starting in 587. And we have the temple destru destruction one and a half years later. So we will uh, see if a few remarks in between there that uh, are relevant. There is the moment where Josiah destroys the altar that Jeroboam uh, had set up. This took place in seven, uh, 627. Uh, Josiah uh, keeps the pass over in five years later in 622. We have Joachim up here uh, as a way mark. It's important because he symbolizes uh, the midnight cry. 
because we see a, 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 uh, yeah, a period of 2 times 70 in, in, on his line. We saw this on page, I think. Page. Where do we have this? <laughs> Can't find it. Okay, on page five of the notes. Extending from 597 to the third degree of other success in 457. <coughs> so this is an important remark. Uh, 592 is where Ezekiel began, begins to have the vision of Ezekiel uh, chapter 1 1. And then we have the siege of Jerusalem, 587, and the temple and the city destroyed. So those are the remarks that we uh, have on here. And then it's important to notice the 390 years and the one and a half years adding up to 391.5. The 0.5 symbolizing the six months, or it is literally six months, of course, uh, which will be uh, become relevant the point five, <coughs> and we have a more relevant in what the point five in point five the point five the will become more relevant. Yes, okay. six months will become relevant. And we have the uh, one twenty year from the moment Israel began to have kings, the first king. Waned King Saul from 1097 BC. Then we have uh, David and Solomon, each reigning 40 years. Together, three times 40 is 120 years. And this 120 and 391.5 becomes a, uh, a relevant, important uh, pattern for us later on. Uh, this is the first time we en encounter uh, July 18, because the temple destruction in 568 took place on the 10th uh, ten, ten day of the fifth month. 586. What did I say? 586. Excuse me. It took place on the 10th day of the fifth month which is uh, on the rabbinical and the Julian. Correct. And that's on page 11. Correct. Page 11. This is the 10th day, the fifth month which is, like Jeff just said, the July 18, uh, on the rabbinical Julian calendar. Uh, to say it in another way, uh, July 18 on the Julian calendar is the 10th day of the fifth month on the rabbinical calendar. That's how you can uh, see this. But it's the first time where, where July 18 uh, occurs. Uh, so if you go to the next line, the Shire Lich. This is a little bit clear so far. The top line. Uh, the line of the Shire Lich is this prophecy of uh, concerning uh, chapter 9 of Revelation. Uh, it's about Islam. 
It came into fulfillment in on August 11, 1840. And when this came to pass, about 200,000 people joined the Millerites because they saw prophecy come into fulfillment. Uh, we have uh, more way, way marks on this line uh, than, than the standard uh, explanation that, that, we, that we know because we do not just add the 391.5 that Josiah Lish calculated, the 391.5 from uh, Revelation f uh, 9, verse 15, about the, the day, the hour, the day, the month, and the year, adding up to 391.5. He calculated that period of time and just added it from July 27, 40, 40, 40, 49. But we are adding each period, the, the hour, the day, the month, and the year, to 1449, giving us a few more remarks. And also we see two periods of 150 that Josiah Lich did not see. And we see a period of 150 mentioned in Revelation 9, verse 5, I should say here, Revelation 9.5, Revelation 9.5, and we see another 150 mentioned in Revelation 9, verse 10. Those are these two, two periods of uh, 150. He saw the second one, but not the first one. Yeah, Josiah Litz just saw this period of 150, not this period of 150. But that's why we have these extra remarks. And between these periods of 150, there is a period of 517, 517, and this period of 517 can be divided in 126 and 391, or vice versa, you can switch it, or 391 and 126. It doesn't matter because both Combinations give uh, relevant waymarks to where you see an Islamic event uh, happening. So we have all these uh, waymarks, and we see, first of all, the A126 and the 391 year, which also becomes very relevant later on in our studies. We also see July 27 showing up uh, one, two, three, four, five times, where we see uh, relevant Islamic effect, uh, events occurring. Are you saying that July 27 is the same as July 18? No, no. No? Okay. It's what not. Are you uh, saying that July 27 represents? No, Paul, I, I've drawn a blank. Why would you think that is is the same July 18 and July 18? I, the, I know that there's two <laughs> numbers that represent the same on July 18, and there's another one. I just was thinking it. I'm not following this one. 26 day of the July 27th is the primary date in Revelation 9. It's July 27th from 1299 to July 27th 1449 that Lich is going to see, but when. He, when we look at the line more fully in our day and age, July 27th becomes, it pops up at least five times in that line, it becomes a symbol of Islam. <coughs> July 18th is a symbol of Islam also, so is a lot, August 11th. So there's more than one date that is a symbol of Islam. Okay, maybe that's what I had in my head, and I didn't know yeah, I think, how to connect them. I don't have it on here, but uh, maybe Stephen knows that the Gregorian date of 
I think this year, of July 27 is J July 18. Do you know by any chance? Maybe that's what you're. No, that is, she wouldn't have remembered that little detail. No. Okay. Okay. So. Um, if we look at both of these lines, line of Ezekiel and Josiah Lich, what they have in common is the 391.5 from here, no, from, from here of course. From July 27, 1449 to August 11, 1840. This is a period of 391.5. And the point 0.5 over a year is uh, 15 days. It's these 15 days. Half a month. Half a month. And the point 0.5 over a year is half a year. Six months. So now we see it. they have something in common. Uh, so far, it, we see no other 391.5 uh, uh, mentioned in the Bible. And uh, what, what we did is overlay these two lines. We tried to uh, to Substitute the point 0.5 of this line with the point 0.5 of this line. That's what what uh, what we did. And if we do that, then we do not add 15 days, but we add uh, six months to this way mark. And if you do that, you get and applying the day-year principle. So you have six months, which is 600. Six months is 180 days. Years. Yeah, the, and then apply the day principle. Then you have 180 years. And then you get to July 18, 2020, which in that year is the 10th day of the fifth month, which we see here, and the 26th day of the fourth month, Gregorian. And we see all these July 27 waymarks. Uh, lining up coincides with the 26th day of the fourth month on the biblical calendar, which is uh, very uh, rare. That doesn't happen every year. The biblical calendar and the uh, uh, yeah, Roman calendars, Julian or Gregorian, they do not line up. Uh, so chances of this uh, happening is one time is maybe one in 15 because you make use of two Roman calendars, Julian and Gregorian. But that it happens five times in a row, and also that there are significant Islamic events connected with it is uh, in, in the billions. And we also saw that the period between this first combination of July 27 and 26 day of the fourth month is 541 years. 541 years. And it happens to be that also if we take this date, these dates as symbols, uh, like 26 day of the fourth month can be written as 264. And July 27 can be written as 277. It also adds up to 541, right? Which is the same as this number here. So that's pretty uh, extraordinary. So those five way marks all occur on the 26th day of the fourth month, and they all occur on the 27th of July, either Gregorian or Julian, correct. and when you put them up symbolically, they add up to the amount of years that those five waymarks 
are located in. Correct, yes. What's the probability of that? Yeah, uh, nobody has. Maybe the detail man knows. The 26th day of the fourth month is which calendar? This is the biblical. biblical. It's all biblical. Yes. Oh, they're all biblical. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these are either, it says here below, Julian or Gregorian. And also if you would multiply them, so you multiply 264 times 277, you get a number 73,128, I think. In the United States you have a comma. Uh, this, so this number, 73,128, if you divide this number by the, the symbol that these two lines have in common, which is 391.5, right? Or just, just 391. It doesn't really matter, but if you multiply, uh, divide it, you get uh, 187.0, uh, which is uh, a symbol for July 18, right? 18th day of the seventh month. So this also points to July 18, which, which we have seen here, uh, which we have seen here. So now, uh, July 18, uh, that is being confirmed in, in, in several ways. If you divide it by 391.5, it comes to 186.7, and then yeah. a, if you round it. But if you just have it 391, it comes to 187. Point zero. Point zero five something. Right. And then Correct. A few decimals. Correct. Just for clarification, whenever you have a date written, such as that 26th day of the fourth month, in that fashion, yes, that. Am I correct in saying that that is pointing that when it's written that fa in that fashion that that is pointing to a biblical yep. date? Biblical Otherwise, calendar. if it, like if it's like July or December, whatever date, then it's it's not biblical. It's either Gregorian or, or Julian. Julian. Yeah. Yes. But, it, but it's always written like with the actual name of the month. Yeah. Okay. But but you can write. But when he does the symbolism, he'll then he he can do it various ways. Yeah. Yes. You, you can write any day in, in this fashion, in this format, of course. Uh, you, you can write July 27. Yeah, uh, okay, yeah that's right. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I get it. Okay. All right. So this is uh, page 11. Unless there are any uh, uh, questions. Okay. If you go to... Yes? No question? If you go to page uh, 2 page I think it's 16 where we have some was nose uh, letters Yeah, I have page 16 where I send most of those letters, but I see two lines on page 15. Page 15 is about the 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 the, the, the 2604 or the I can briefly mention this. Page 15 is about the the symbol. 2604 or 264 if we drop the zero because we saw over five five times we saw the number 
we saw the date 26 day of the fourth month, right? Which you can write as a number 264. And 264 or 2604. Do we see the similarity between this, those two numbers? On the other line you were just at, the July 27th on the biblical calendar was the 26th yeah. day of the fourth month. Yes. So that's 264. That occurred five times. Yes. You see it there, Daniel? 264? Yes. You see it here? Yes. So that can symbolically be 264. Yes. Yes, that's correct. And we we uh, first came across this 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 symbol on the 2520. I call it the extended 2520, which starts in in, in 742 BC, where Isaiah uh, conf tries to uh, convince or con try to convey the 2520 to King Ahab in Isaiah 7, verse 9. Uh, King Ahab? No. Ahaz, I should say, King Ahaz. Isaiah is trying to convey the 2520 in 742 to King Ahaz. And he says, if you, if you do not believe, then your kingdom will not be established. That's the beginning of the 2520. Seven begins in the year 742 BC, and that's where the prophecy of the 2520 chiasm starts. Right. And he doesn't believe it, so The curse comes upon the 2520 curse comes upon on Judah in 677, 677 BC, and of course the no Northern Kingdom uh, falls under the curse in 723 BC, and th they both end. One ends in 1798, the other in 1844. But if you add the the 19 years that you see in, in the beginning. If you add it also at the end, you uh, end up with 1863. And we call it the, we call it also this whole stru structure, the 2520 mirror, because you see a civil war at the beginning between the northern, northern and, and southern kingdom. And you see a civil war at the end between the northern and, and the southern kingdom. A year 2520 is rejected by AS, a year 2520 is rejected by James, James White, and the 1863 chart is uh, produced without the 2520 on it. But the whole length of this structure is 2604 or 264, right? Mm -hmm. So, and also the Week of Christ, we see a 26-4, if we divide this period in, uh, in months, it has a total length, this week of, symbolic week of 84 months, which is 84 times 30, is 25, 20 days. Uh, but if... We take this, these 42 months and we multiply it with the date of the crucifixion in uh, AD 31. If you multiply it, 84 times 31 is also 2604. So that's to show the meaning of, trying to show the meaning of the, of the 264. It's good. Uh, refer to the week of Christ, and it also refers to this uh, extended 2520 or the mirror 2520. However, you want to look at it. Uh, but we see uh, uh, Christ at the center of this uh, chiasm. 
So I think that's all uh, we can say, uh, you want to say about this. If you go to the, to the next page, the letters of stem will snow. Um, it was discovered that the letters of Samuel Snow form an interesting parent, uh, pattern. Uh, Samuel Snow, of course, gave the midnight cry. And it was interesting to see that he wrote some letters in 1844 which were published in the Midnight Cry magazine and one in the Sign of the Times magazine. And <coughs> yeah, the first letter was written in uh, on February 16, published February 22, and again published in, in on April 3, but this, this was not the Midnight Cry magazine, but the Sign of the Times magazine. The second one published in May 2nd. The publishing was on May 2nd. Unknown, it was unknown when it, when it was written. The third letter was written June 22nd or June 22, published July, June 27. And we see a fourth letter published on July 18. Uh, <coughs> so first of all, it's interesting that the, the fourth letter was published on July 18, uh, 1844. So again, we see uh, July 18. Uh, we also see that... You're saying it equals July 18, but it's off to the right. What, I don't what? Yeah, July 18, the last, le last letter. Oh, the last three. letter, the yes. last letter. Yeah. Oh, there's five, there was four, four, nine, four two, ten. three, four. Then what's the July 18th one? It's when it was published. The fourth letter was published on July 18. Sometimes you note when he wrote the letter, sometimes you note when he published the letter, sometimes both. Okay. Yes. Correct. So interesting that we also see a July 18 uh, year, and also that m most of the publishing or, or writing dates have a biblical event connected with it. Because we see, for instance, that June 20 22, June 22 is the sixth day of the third month, biblical, which is Pentecost. We see. May 2, which is the 14th day of the first month, which is Passover, which was Passover, where he wrote a letter, an article about the correct date of the crucifixion of Christ. So he, he did not know that this date was uh, Passover, so it was very interesting. Uh, we see the temple dedication on February 22. We see the false pass over on April 3. So most of them have biblical events connected with them. Even if he had known it was the date of the Passover, he wasn't the one that was deciding when those article, those publications were going to be published. Published, yeah, yeah. It's totally out of his hand. Correct. Thank you. And uh, what Tira Turner then uh, did, because two two-way marks are left without any significant event connected with it. So he just doubled them. He doubled the first way mark, February 16. Uh, and he added 16 days, <coughs> because February is the second month. Uh, he added 16 days and two months to this way mark. How 
Uh, you, you just... <laughs> yeah. It was the 16th month of the second, I mean the 16th day of the second month, so yes. we added 16 days and... Yes, two months. That's what you two did. Two months, okay. And then you end up uh, on May 2nd, which already was a way mark. And then he did the same thing again. He doubled, he doubled it again, and he ended up uh, at July 18. So we see uh, the chiasm there, a doubling. After a doubling, you end up with this uh, chiasm. And doublings, of course, are symbols for the mid midnight cry. It's a, it's a doubling for the midnight cry. Uh, you saw another chiasm when you do not double this date, but just uh, you saw there were 120, 126 days between February 16 and June 22nd, or June 22. 100, 126 is already a symbol that we know. And June? February 16 to June 22. February 16 to June 22, okay. Happens one, to be. 126. Exactly one hundred twenty six days. You know it's on your notes, right? I'm looking for it. Let me see. And in the middle of it, and in the middle of this chiasm, uh, we see April nineteen, which is a very uh, important symbol for us. It's the first day of the first month. Uh, first in the first disappointment. So there we also see a chiasm. And then we just took the, the average between the 77 and 63, which is 70. And trying to see if there was also a chiasm there. And yes, uh, we also see interesting dates showing up, because if we add 70 days to February 16, we get to April 26, which is uh, the 26th day of the fourth month, right? That's 70. Yeah, if we add 70 days to February 16, we end up with April 26, which is the 26th day of the fourth month. Uh, which we, we already have seen is a reference to July 18, 2020, which is also the 26th day of the fourth month, both biblical and rabbinical. Um, then you go another 70 days. Yeah, from 70 days from here, you get to July 5, which in itself seems ir irrelevant, but July 5 in 2020 is July 18, 2020. So July 18... Five is July 18th because why? July 18, 2020 Gregorian is July 5 Julian. Oh, okay. The, the difference between the Julian and, and the Gregorian calendar in 2020 is 13 days. It isn't 13 days always. No, every 200 years the, the Julian day calendar goes one day behind, more more behind. But in 2020, the difference is 13 days, exactly. So we see symbols of July 18 showing up year and year and year, which is interesting uh, to notice. Also, we saw that June 27, has no biblical event connected with it, so Theodore Turner doubled also this date, but in, in another way. He first took the biblical date of June 27, which is the 11th day of the third month, and he doubled that. And then you get the 20, 22nd day of the sixth month, 
which symbolically is June 22, so which is symbolizing this way mark where this letter was written by Samuel Snow, which is, uh, on, on, was on Pentecost. And that will also become uh, relevant because June 27 will become uh, obsolete in, uh, in, in, on the other line. Also this date, April 3, will become obsolete because this is just a republishing of this letter. All the letters were published on the, in the Midnight Crime magazine except this letter, which was on the Science of Times magazine. So it will become obsolete because it's, first of all, it's the same letter as this one. Yeah, and also it's uh, the false Passover, as you can see in the notes. So we have two reasons to uh, discard this date. That's all I think we can say about this. Then we go to the next structure, page 18. <coughs> yeah, what we can say about Samuel Snow, uh, lastly, is we also see the, the 120 pattern followed by 391. I forgot this, uh, to forgot to mention this. If you at 391.5 to June 22nd, June 22. If you add 391.5 from this way mark, you end up with July 18, but then in the year 1845. But nevertheless, July 18 shows up again after. The 1845 is significant, it's just when it it shows up, right? Yeah, you see July 18 showing up. That, that, that's all. July 18. Yeah. So that's at the end of a 126. Yes. So we, we add 391.5 from, from this way mark to June 22. You get to July 18. <coughs> yeah, we, we add the 291.5 because it is the, the common symbol that the lines of Ezekiel and Josiah Litz have in common, right? We apply this 120 and 391.5 pattern that we saw here, and the 126 and 395.5 pattern that, that we saw here. So here we see this both, both of these patterns uh, applied in the structure of Samuel Snow. Here we see the 120 and 391, here we see the 126 and 391, and here we see both of them. We see a 120 and 391, and a 126 and 391. Yeah. Uh, June 22nd is the date of the Battle of Raffia. So there, therefore, we can mark that there as the midnight, as a symbol of midnight, and uh, that would take us then to the fifth day of the fourth month of Ezekiel, as well. And uh, Ezekiel then in chapter four, you can, there's an indirect 391.5 year prophecy he gives there, and so th you can take out to your line now and to Raffia at, on the 9th of November mm -hmm. and you can then line up from midnight uh, there's going to be like a 391.5 prophecy there and, and you say that there June 22nd then points to the following year it points to July 18 mm -hmm. so it kind of lines up with what we're doing the 9th of November we're, uh, it's like, uh, we're pointing to July 18, and it includes a 391.5-year um, prophecy okay. as well. So, Thank you. Just All right. I'll quickly go to the 
Italian camp meetings, page 18. <coughs> 45 minutes left. Uh, we saw interesting patterns showing up in, in Italian camp meetings. And we see Again, the 120 and 391.5 <coughs> or 126 and 391.5 uh, show up in, in uh, Italy 2017, 2018 and on our line today. Uh, first, the Italian camp meeting 2017, we saw the Jeff ended his presentation on the Sabbath of June 2nd at exactly 9-11 when it was sundown when the Sabbath began and June 2 the biblical date was the sixth day of the third month which is uh, Pentecost it's, it's not necessary for what you're saying, but it's pretty fabulous <clears throat> that when we did that at 9-11, that was exactly when Sabbath began in that particular place yeah. in Italy at 9-11. Yeah. yeah, in Torah Pelic, the Sabbath began at 9-11 exactly, correct? Uh, so we see that 391.5 ends at June 15, which is the biblical date, uh, second day of the fourth month, which points to the, st the structure of Samuel Snow, because the second day of the fourth month on the line of snow was, was uh, uh, July 18, which we see here. So, the Italian camp meeting of 2017 points to July 18. And also it, it points to the next camp meeting in Italy 2018, where Jeff <coughs> ended his presentation on the Sabbath of June 9, Saturday, uh, exactly at 9-11 which was the end of the Sabbath uh, that day. So this, yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, and then we see a 126 to October 13 and a 391.5 pointing to November 9, 2019 which, as we know, is, is uh, Raffia. And it was predicted on July 27 by Daniel Machado that Raffia on November 9 would be predicted. We didn't know that this would be the date, but it was predicted that um, the that close would come on October 13th. That the, yeah, that the message would I mean that cry would be given on October 13. Exactly. Uh, and oct on October 13, uh, November 9 was established by Tito Turner by counting 291.5 days from this date. And he ended up on November 9, which was already put into the record by, by Tess uh, 10 days before <coughs> October 13, on October 3. And it was already in the record by Stephen, but it hadn't been put out in the public. Yes, Stephen also came to the same date, but it wasn't, uh, yeah. 1849. 1849 then, okay. But it wasn't uh, in the record. So we have three witnesses, so to say, for November 9 to be the close of probation. 
uh, and if you add 252 days to November 9, you end up on July 18, 2020. So again, we see July 18 showing up. So far, we see it on every line that we draw on the board. <coughs> we keep seeing uh, July 18. Interesting is that we also apply this pattern of 120 and 391.5, or 126 and 391.5, that the middle of this chiasm is August 11, which is a symbol uh, of Islam, right? August 11, 1840. Daniel Mashadu had his, uh, uh, how do you say? He made his prediction on July 27, which is also a symbol of, the, of Islam on the line of Lich. And if we go to, if we just go to July 18, 2020 and apply this, this pattern of 120 or 126 plus 391.5, if we apply this on July 18, 2020 and count backwards, if you take 391.5, you count back from July 18, 2020, you end up on June 22, 2019, which is a uh, way mark on the, on the line of Samuel Snow White, we saw that, June 22, is uh, this way mark over here, which is Pentecost. And again, if we go back 120 days from there, we end up on February 22, which is also a symbol, a way mark on the line of symbol snow, right? You see that she is here. And again, if we go back six days from there, we end up on February 16, which is the first way mark on the line of Samuel Snow. So you see all the letters of Samuel Snow showing up if you apply the, the structure of 120, 391, and 126 and 391. So this pattern is very important. <coughs> uh, and what we do, do not see is June 27. Like we said, it is the same as uh, June 22. So it, symbolically, it points back to the June 22. That's why symbolically it is the same as June 22, which is Pentecost. It becomes uh, absolute. So we do not see it, and we do not see April 3 also, because it's false Passover and it's a republishing of the letter. So we do not see those two way marks on this line. Uh, but every other way mark shows up on this line. Uh, if we take the middle uh, of this chiasm, of the 126 chiasm, we see May 2nd and April 19, both of which are way marks on the line of Samuel Snow. We see May 2nd, April 19. Here they are, are on two different uh, way marks. And here they, uh, they are on the same way mark. I mean, this is the Gregorian date, May, May 2. And this is the Julian date, April 19. So this is also uh, yeah, pretty interesting to note. And the Battle of Rafi took place on June 22nd. Yes. That this is where we go uh, in, a, in a moment, where we will go to. This is all uh, we can say uh, for now on the, the CAM meetings, unless there is something. Back the other way for a second so I can ask. Yes. Stephen, a question. On the 
what you said, what you inserted on there. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel receives his vision in Ezekiel 1.1, mm -hmm. 592, but that's midnight. Yes. And you're saying that that lines up with June 22nd on Samuel Snow's. Okay, so this is a an argument to justify why we're saying that Sabbath is midnight and Raphia. Right? This is a, would be an argument that you could use to mark it as midnight. This coming Sabbath? Yes. This, this microphone, please. Yes. Yes. Okay. So you, your your logic there was June twenty second, sixth day of third month Pentecost on the Samuel Snow line corresponds to five ninety two on the top line, which is Ezekiel one one. Yes. And that was the fifth day of the fourth month, mm -hmm. which in Millerite history was July twenty first. Yes. Midway between mm -hmm. April 19th and October 22nd. That's why we identify that as midnight. Mm -hmm. And midnight is therefore also June 22nd, and June 22nd is November 9th, 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. He shook his head to all those questions. <laughs> yeah, he shook um, his head yes. Mm -hmm. And it's on the on midnight at uh, Ezekiel, it's, it's the same, chapter 4 is the same day, connects to the same day as Ezekiel 1, 1, is the fifth day of the fourth month, and there you can mark an indirect 381.5 year prophecy uh, happening at that their time, and so we, we can plug that into our history with Raphia, now we're, we're predicting 391. So and those people yeah. represented by Ezekiel this Sabbath on November 9th, which is June 22nd, which is midnight, mm -hmm. that are on the right side of the issue that have been typified by Ezekiel, the message that they will have in their possession is the message of the 391, which is a mm -hmm. message of Islam yes, and Paneum mm -hmm. and July 18th, 2020. Mm -hmm. And then he, he showed that from the June 22nd, 1844, it's 391 days and half to July 18 in 1845. This also connects. Okay. One more thing I would like to say is that October 13, where the midnight cry was given, is October 13 points to the very first line on the, on the board of a CQL, where we see that October 13 is the 15th day of the 8th month or midnight cry. So that's all I would like to mention. Uh, go to the, to the next page. So when the midnight cry arrived on October 13th, you should expect to see a counterfeit midnight cry there as represented by Jeroboam and his two altars which represents the image of the beast, which is a corrupt marriage relationship, and therefore you should see a counterfeit midnight cry message there that's represented by a man and a woman. Correct. Yeah, you could say that. It, it. You just, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't have said it any better. <laughs> he lined up. October 13th is the day that Daniel Machado <coughs> said he believed the midnight cry message yes. was going to be given. And on October 3rd, Tess had put November 9th into the record. On October 13th at noon at Lambert Church, Theodore calculated out November 9th based upon adding 391 and a half days to October 13th. Therefore, the, the midnight cry message of October 13th, with its second testimony is the message of a 391 and a half. But when that midnight cry message arrives, you can also take that date and line it up with 977. 977 is the beginning of Ezekiel's story. 977 is also the midnight cry because that date uh, is doubled there at the end of chapter 12 in 1 Kings. And the disobedience prophecy prophet's prophecy is oh, altar, altar, there's a doubling. 
So when the midnight cry message arrives, as typified by Jeroboam in 977 B.C., pointing to October 13, 2018, here in Arkansas, then one of the things, one of the characteristics of the arrival of the midnight cry message is that you should see a counterfeit midnight cry message as represented by Jeroboam's two altars. And those two altars both represent the image of the beast. Okay, they were golden calves, which is a symbol of the image of the beast. And the image of the beast is the combination of a man and a woman with the woman in control of the relationship. It's a corrupt mar right. marital relationship. So when the midnight cry message arrives in our history, we should also expect to see a counterfeit midnight cry message at the same point in time, and it should be represented by a man and a woman. And he said, I could say that, and I said, I did, and we just doubled it. <laughs> yes, but the prediction was on July 27th, and when you made that statement, you said it was made on October 13th. The prediction that Daniel made was on July 27th. And you just he said no, he predicted that the midnight cry message would arrive on October 13th. Right, but he predicted it on July 27th. Which is a date of Islam also. Correct. You're, you're letting your meeting get out of control here, Odilio. Okay. You only have a certain amount of time. Uh, 30 minutes left. We'll go to page 21, where we try to uh, connect the lines. <coughs> so, we saw an obvious connection between the line of Ezekiel on the line of Josiah, the 391.5, right? Mm -hmm. And we switched the, or we substituted the 0.5 of Ezekiel on the, uh, with the line of uh, Josiah Lich. And now we try to find a connection between the line of Samuel Snow and Ezekiel, these two lines. And if you look at the, at the dates, so all the dates that we see here, Uh, we see on these uh, two lines. These are the dates on the line of Samuel Snow, February 16, etc. And the la last letter published on July 18, right? And these are the lines of the, li uh, the dates, the years, so to say, on the line of Ezekiel. Yes, where Jeroboam made the sacrifice on the altar, and yes, Jerusalem uh, destroyed, uh, temple destroyed, 586. And this is the, how we come to that. But first we try to see a, a, a try to make a connection between these two lines. <coughs> and it was discovered that if we write the, the dates as, 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 as numbers, so June 22 I can write as uh, six, six months, what's it? Doesn't uh, doesn't really work. Yeah. So June twenty two, I can write as uh, six two two. Uh, June twenty seven, you can write as six two seven. You can do this with all the dates, but it, it, it was discovered that these two dates correspond with these two dates. So we see a, a connection there, because June 22nd corresponds with this date, and June 27 corresponds with this date. which seems easy to do, but if you try to do it uh, randomly, if, if you just would pick any two days here on this line and any two days, days or years on this line and try to match them, it seems uh, impossible. And the odds has been calculated for this to uh, appear. And just to have one match like this uh, is one in thousand. If you try this at home, you, you can do it. 
we did it. Uh, odds are about one in thousand that you come up with a with a match like this, and, and to have two matches, two matches is one in a million, one in uh, one point five million actually. It shows it there in, on page twenty one. So this is a uh, yeah pretty rare to see this uh, uh, that the, these two days coincide in this way, and. They do not line up uh, directly, but you can you see that if you mirror this line, which I did on this last line, if you mirror the years, reverse them, reverse them so to say, you see it, you see 977 year, you see 977 year, right? 627 a year, 627 a year. So we, we've reversed the years, which Theodore already demonstrated in another line of his uh, multiple times. Uh, then you see that they do line up. So I will wipe this, or maybe I can leave it right there. But you see that. If you do that, that June 22nd lines up with 622, and June 27th lines up with 627. Do we see it? Mm -hmm. And we can go to page 22, where we will apply this. Uh, also, you can line up 977, you have Josiah. Prophecy there as well. This? Yeah, you, that there will line up. Uh, not, I'm not talking numer num um, numerically, but I'm just saying in the, um, the histories, mm -hmm. you know, you're having 977 BC, uh, you're, you have the history of Josiah mm -hmm. and uh, the prophecy beginning there. Right. Which is a, like a three nine one, and then that connects with July eighteen, and um, yeah, the, the connection. It's also a three ninety one prophecy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, and you have the like, ashes being poured out as well upon the altar. So maybe ashes could be a, like a symbol of something we've been talking about, but I'm not <laughs> as well. That's part of it. Yeah, there's ashes associated with July eighteenth because of the nuclear strike. So he's taken the ashes of Jeroboam and Jeroboam's altar in 977 oh, and lined up with July 18th. Thanks, thanks. Uh, if we then go quickly to the next page, page 22. It's interesting, it's page 22, right? Because it talks about <laughs> June 22. But anyway, uh, we see these two lines. We see here. On this, uh, these two lines here. That's from the bottom of the left side. Yes. Okay. Those are these two lines uh, repeated. Uh, we yeah we line this these two dates up. Uh, and if we compare these two lines with the lines that was developing at, at that moment about the war between uh, Paris and uh, or Russia and Germany and uh, Russia and the USA. <coughs> he also had, uh, he had op Operation Barbarossa and, and, and Rafia mentioned there, and Operation Barbarossa happened to be on June 22. 1941, and we have Rafia, which also happened on June 22 in 2017 BC, but she never took any notice to this, but uh, we do, and you see that they line up perfectly with the two lines of Tirora, we could say, 
Uh, and that's pretty extraordinary that we see four ray marks that uh, show uh, June 20, 22 on the fifth ray mark. Five. Do you know the details of Operation Barbarossa off the top of your head or not? Uh, no. I know do it's. Do you, Stephen? Germany invading uh, uh, Russia, but it's failed. What details yeah. have a mic? Mic to have a mic. I'm just asking what t what type of details. I know a wee bit of the history. Well, I'm just wondering. I don't. Rem I heard it, but I don't remember <coughs> the history at attached to Operation Barbarossa on June 22nd. And I just wanted to think about it, but I can wait till later. Mm -hmm. Right. So because that's going to be repeated in three days, right? Well, then why can't you tell what he knows? Do you know it? He said he knows a bit of it. Oh, I just I know that Russia uh, Russia was invaded by Germany, but the, the event kind of seems to be the opposite of what we would be predicting, in, in the sense that uh, Russia would be then in in, in, its, in a sense attacking the United States. So it's maybe. Uh, and then it was Germany attacking Russia. Yes. And Germany attacking Russia in that history. Which one would be the king of the south? Well, I would say Russia. Okay. So we see <coughs> uh, the stock chart. But we see July 18 here uh, not lining up with, with Pentium. And w what we did was overlaying June 27, because it was symbolically the same as June 22. We showed it already. And the, then you can uh, shift these, these ray marks one position to the left, because symbolically June 27 is June 22. And the same for this. So if we do that, then... Everything shifts. shifts one place to the left. So we overlay June 27 here. And do the same here. And this then becomes July 18. This becomes 977, which was the 15th day of the eighth month. Then we see, we do see that it lines up with Panium in this way, perfectly. Uh, and also being the, uh, lining up with the Midnight Kwai symbol, 15th day of the 8th month, uh, that we saw in, 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 uh, in the story of Jeroboam. So Panium being the Midnight Kwai, July 18 being the Midnight Kwai, and Panium at the same time. So that was also very interesting to, to know. Uh, June 22, of course, uh, being Pentecost on the line of uh, Seven Wars Snow, sixth day of the third month. That's all I, all we will say about this. We can skip page 25. This was just uh, an explanation on how. Stephen came to suggest that uh, the end of Panium, because we see <coughs> we see now July 18 as the beginning of Panium, Panium being a period instead of one single point. Uh, Stephen proposed, suggested a, a date in 2021 as being the end of Panium, where the king of the North will defeat the King of the South. It was based uh, uh, at first on the structure that you see on page 25, uh, connected with the fall of the Berlin Wall, November 9, 2000, uh, 1989. 
and the Soviet Union dissolved on December 25, 1991. And this day, December 25, 1991, uh, was proposed as the possible date for the end of Panium in 2021. which is the date we see here. It was uh, a, a suggestion by, by Stephen. But w when we, l we looked at this, when we tried to... when we looked at the, the structure that originated from this, we saw a, uh, a very interesting pattern uh, showing up, which is the one uh, over here, which we see on page... 26, where we see all these uh, remarkable uh, yeah, patterns showing up. We see all these, all these bullet, bullet points mentioned. Maybe we can go quickly through them. But first of all, we see 777 days between what we know to be Rafia and the end of Panium. I call it end. In July 18 would be the beginning of Panium. Beginning. We see 777 days between November 9, 2019 and December 25, 2021. Uh, which is interesting number, of course, 777. The three way marks, November 9, July 18, 2020, 25 December 2021, are all on a Sabbath, Sabbath being a seventh day. So again, we see a 777 there. And also we saw that if we take the word value of uh, Panium and Rafia, the word value of Panium being a 74, and the word value of Rafia 53, if you subtract it, it's 21, which is 7 plus 7 plus 7 three times uh, 21. So there again you see uh, 777. So this happens every 28 years that we see 770 day period between November 9 and December 25, two years later, because of the leap year issue. But if you take into account if you take into account that these days also have to be on the Sabbath, and also that July 18 is the 26th day of the fourth month, biblical, on the biblical and rabbinical calendar, this has uh, never happened before in the history of the earth. That is pretty extraordinary. Uh, right there. And It was, if you, if you look at the, the symbology here, the 391 followed by 252, again, 252 and a 525, uh, sorry, a 252 and a 273. Uh, we see the 252 uh, appearing there, and it has been uh, uh, present, stated by this, this movement that the 2520 is the key that unlocks prophetic time. And also, uh, it was recently discovered that Hiram Edson, who, who discovered the 2520 for the Northern Kingdom, or he, he how do you say it, he, William Miller also knew, of course, about the 2520 for the Northern Kingdom, but he didn't. Uh, use it, but Harim Edson, he presented the 
2524 the northern kingdom and he referred to the 2520 as being the key to uh, that opens the prophetic understanding the prophetic message and he referred to first Colos Colossians first 126 and it's interesting that it's first 126 because the symbol 126 uh, it refers to the 2520 right uh, 126 is symbolically the 2520 so that's in your notes you can you can read it in more detail there there are 2520 days between uh, Raphia and Panium the five to five days between uh, July 18 and Panium, the five to five can we? 2021 mm -hmm. December. Yes. Yes. <coughs> five to five can refer to a, a Bible passage. If we go to Daniel 5:25. We read about the 2520 there. It talks about many, many tackle you for sin. Sorry? This five? Okay. Better? And if you go also to Genesis 5.25. I <laughs> don't know what this looks like, but it's a five. Uh, it talks about uh, Methuselah, who got Lamech when he was born, 187 years old. Uh, 187, of course, a symbol for uh, July 18, 18 day of the seventh month. And we see that Lamech in first, what was it? First, I don't have it here. Lamech became 777 years old before he died. So we see, in one first, we see the 525, the 777, and the 187, all in uh, one first. Uh, we saw that Lamech, the name Lamech, means a wild man, according to the Eastern Bible Dictionary. The wild man, of course, is uh, mentioned only one time in the, in the Bible, in Genesis 16, 11 to 12. A wild man referring to Ishmael or the, the patriarch of uh, the, all the Muslims in the world. So Lamech sim symbolizing uh, Islam. Right? And also Lamech, if you take the word value of Lamech himself, If we take uh, 12 times 1 times 13 times 5 times 3 times 8, you get 18,720, or in other words, July 18, 2020. So we see all these remarkable. Uh, Patterns and, and, and symbols showing up in a, in, a, in a bizarre way. Also, July 18 uh, itself symbolizes 2520 because 18 uh, times 7 times 20 is also 2520.
it's all there in the, in the document to, 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 to study and we should become familiar with these uh, patterns and symbols. Yeah. It's not very difficult to understand, but we have to be able to un understand these things for ourselves. But we also can explain these things to other people and that we are confident with, with this way of, of working, that we are, can, can rely on these, these things. With the, yeah. So it's, I would like to say to everybody to take his time to study these things. And, uh, uh, so we are pretty much at the end of our, our study. And we saw a, on page 20, Twenty-eight. I haven't drawn this on the board. There was no more, no more space left. <coughs> but we saw a connection between the first time that Rafia and Panion were opened up. In uh, on December seventeen, two thousand sixteen. And we saw a connection there <coughs> between that date and July 18, which you can see on page 28. Because uh, we see a period of exactly 187 weeks from December 17, 2016 and July 18, 2020. And also a period of exactly 151 weeks from 17 December 2016 and, and Rafia at November 9, 2019. And the 151, of course, also being a symbol of the 2520, because, uh, like it says there, many, many Teko Yufarsin, if you take at one time, a uh, shekel was uh, uh, a many was fifty shekels before the exile to Babylon, and after the exile, it was uh, many was sixty shekels. So we have two values for many many teku you for sin, one two six, and also one five one. So we see. A 187 and a 151 from December 20, December 17, 2016 to November 9 and July 18. And we see the two periods of 77 there between December 17 and June 9, 2018. And again, a 77 zero days <coughs> between June 9. 2018 and July 18, 2020. And this, the 7 7, the 2 times 7 7 we saw on the line of Samuel Snow on this sky some year from, uh, from February 16, uh, ending uh, July 18. So that is where uh, we see the, the, the connection with the line of seven was snow. That was 77 days and 77 days, and yes. this one's 77 weeks and 77 days. Correct, correct. And... Uh, if we go to the next page, we, we were talking about the nature of the attack. We saw that the first bomb 
in the Second World War that, that was dropped on Hiroshima, on Japan. Happened on August 6, 1945, which on the biblical calendar was the 26th day of the fourth month, which symbolizing is symbolized July 18, which is 26th day of the fourth month, but both biblical and rabbinical. It happened on exactly at 8.15 in the morning. 8.15 symbolizing uh, August 15 or the midnight cry. The second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki on August 9, uh, 1945 Gregorian, which was July 27 on the Julian calendar. On July 27, symbolizing uh, Islam on the line of Lich. We saw that over and over again. And a third bomb was intended to be dropped on Kokura on August 11, but uh, did not take place. But August 11, symbolizing again, uh, a symbol is, is, is a symbol for Islam that we see on the line of Lich, August 11, 1840. And we see the the surrender of Japan on August 15, again symbolizing the Midnight Cry. And also the, the first warning that was given to Japan, but rejected by Japan on July 27, uh, 1945, the first, uh, the first bullet point there. And then most extraordinary of all, was the time span between the first bomb on Hiroshima and July 18, 2020, which is exactly 3,910 weeks and five days. And if we drop the zero, we have the symbol 391.5 there. That was, that, what, was the, what was that time span? What was it? The, the time span between the first bomb on Hiroshima? Yeah. First bomb on Japan, which was at Hiroshima. Was yes. at Hiroshima? Yeah, but what do you mean? Span from what? The Until first bomb. July 18th, 2020. Oh. Between Hiroshima and July 18th, 2020. Okay. It's exactly 3910 weeks and five days. And if you drop the zero, you get the symbol 391.5. Do you see it? From Hiroshima to 2020, it's only 391. Yes. Three hundred, three thousand nine hundred and ten weeks, but we dropped oh, the zero. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. You know, something that, that I just realized. Now I hope Stephen plans to include it tomorrow. He quoted a bunch of phenomenon of the seven 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 associated with Donald Trump. So here we have Donald Trump, the forty fifth president of the United States. And Samuel Snow's history goes to 1845, with the emphasis on 45, and the atomic bombs are in 45. Um, I think you have a connection with the 45th president yeah. of the United States as well, yeah. with both Snow's history, July 18th, 1845, and the bombs of 1945. Yeah. Um, I, but anyway. Interesting point. Uh, I think, see, I'm <coughs> over time already. How, how, how much more do I have? Uh, time is up, right? Time is up. So, so, what do you have to do? I think the, the rest is pretty straightforward. I think we, we have dealt with all the lines that are in, in here. The rest, I think, is pretty st straightforward. We, if there are any questions about it, we can, uh, of course, answer them on the WhatsApp or whatever email. So we can leave it uh, at this, if, unless there, there are any questions. Uh, earlier, uh, there was a certain day Going back to a certain state, this is we can find. Yeah. Yes. 
on page 26. Yes. And if we take the number point number five, and if we take also take into account that July 18, 2020 is on a Sabbath and coincides with the 26th day of the fourth month, both biblical as well as rabbinical, then this alignment of dates has never occurred before in Earth's history. And that reminds me of the fact that in Noah's time it had never rained. Right. That's pointing towards the Sunday law. Okay. Thank you. If it is all, then we can uh, close. Father in heaven, thank you for uh, the study. Help us to understand these things that we have discussed and help us to be aware that and realize that these things are coming from your hand. Uh, help us to uh, have faith in these uh, patterns and symbols that you are revealing to us. <coughs> help us to apply these things in the, in, in the correct way and help us to be confident in, in this way of uh, researching uh, your word and please give us uh, more light of the events that are uh, right before us, Lord, and help us to do uh, the work. Please bless us with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we need to, to finish the work. And um, Please work on our hearts and help us to uh, accept all these, these things that you are, you are revealing to us. Harden not our hearts, Lord, but open our hearts, help us to do your will that you may use us as an instrument and in your hands. We ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.